You chose to go with the Fordite on a slab. So let's do this. Um, I talked about putting the red on the inside, so we're definitely going to go that route. And I want to showcase the best part of this material on the knife as we can. So let's go ahead and look at orienting this knife in a fashion just like that. In fact, we'll just put it just like that. That way we get the majority of this Fordite right on the material. And we're just going to go drill our three holes and get this put in place. Let's do it. Each one of these knives, I'm going to show a little bit different part of the process. On this one, I went over to the drill press and I drilled my holes. This one, this one, and this one. And then I just bring it over here and I'm going to mark it out. That way I know where to cut on the bandsaw. And I'm just going to cut out the excess material on the bandsaw so that the next part of the process goes nice and smooth. This is real easy. You just lay out your material just like that. Flip this over. It's that simple. Mark this one out and then I'll go cut these out on the bandsaw. The next process that I'm going to do is I'm going to radius the front edge. I'm going to create this radius right here and I'll polish this front edge before I do the glue up. Let me go cut these out real quick like on the bandsaw. All right, here we are. We've got everything laid out, cleaned with acetone and ready to glue. So let's put out some epoxy, two equal spots, just like that. And make sure you mix this really well. I like to push the pins through the other side, put a little bit of epoxy on the back side of the pen, and then push them back through just to make sure that there's plenty of epoxy around the pen. So see how I put the epoxy there. I'm going to put a little bit on this side. And I'm going to work those pins back and forth just so if there's any little gaps, it pulls that epoxy into the cavity that the pen sits in. So I just put, put a nice amount of epoxy around the pins. Knock the pin that direction, then knock the pin back. And now, let's lock our clamps on, and then we'll address the squeeze out. Pretty darn good. Ooh, look at that Fordite. So cool. I think it's gonna turn out really neat. Let's cut the pins off and start shaping. A lot of sheaths. Holy moly. That's uh that's a lot of sheaths. Let's get to cutting. I'm just gonna cut all of these out. Got my trusty razor knife here.
we need to attach all of the belt loops first. Perfect. We've got all of these belt loops sewn on. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the welts and I'm going to glue those in to the back panel all the way around. So this is going to get glue here and I'm going to glue this welt in. Now that we've got all of the welts glued on, we're going to go ahead and glue this side of the welt, glue the back face of the front and glue the fronts on. Now we've got all of the front panels glued on. This is where we're at. I took, after I glued on the front panels, I cleaned up the edges, made sure everything was nice and crisp between all three layers. And now that the edge is nice and crisp, I can take and run my stitching groove all the way around. You want to crispen up all your edges and get everything right because your stitch line will run on the finished outside edge. So if this is wonky at all, then your stitch line will be wonky. So get this nice and straight and true, and then when you run your stitch line, it'll give you a perfect place for your stitches, and it'll be nice and straight and true. Now it's time to space out the stitches. Here's a good tip on this one. I like to start at the very tip where the two lines, con uh, where the confluence of the two lines is. That's going to put your a stitch right at the V. That's really what you want. Just run that up. That's going to give you your spacing on your stitches. So what happens is, by starting the stitch wheel right in the tip, your stitch will go from here to the tip and then back up. Rather than having an odd one here and then one over here and then having your stitch cross over, it'll go all the way down to the tip and then back up. Ooh, look at those. Now we got them all stitched together, but they're still rough. They are still rough. I like to take the edge beveler here one at a time and I'm going to bevel all of the edges you know clean them up nice long even pass that gives me a uniform bevel cleans up the edge nice I'll do that on the front and the back Also do the top. Check this out. This is a really neat blade. This is a satin finished 332nd thick blade, and we used Fordite to finish the handle. I love that Fordite material, and it's a thin material on a thick blade. It feels solid. It's a really sturdy feel. I feel like I could take this knife and throw it at the fence post all day long and that it would hold up. And I made a corresponding black leather sheath for this knife. I think that the black really fit the, the tones of the Fordite. You know, we had the, the black and the Fordite in the background. So, you know, I kind of thought black with this would go a lot better. So anyhow, we did the black sheath on here. I think you guys built a beautiful knife. I, your choice with the Fordite was spot on. I absolutely love it, especially with that satin finish on the blade. Um, overall, A plus, guys. Great job. Is this my favorite out of the batch? It's probably not my absolute favorite, 
there was a whole bunch of knives that we made in the series and I encourage you to go back to the first video and choose some other alternate endings and see some of the other knives that we built. Overall, I built a number of knives for this series and this is probably number three for me. So there are some better ones. Thanks guys, really appreciate you watching the videos. I'll see you on the next one.